If your stable diffusion art sucks, then these tips might help you. In this video, I'm going to go over five steps that will help your art be better. Let's go. Number five, use image to image tab. When someone thinks of stable diffusion, they think, huh, it's that text to image tool like mid journey. And this is also the sole reason why a lot of people are focused on the text to image tab and not the image to image tab. But in truth, this tab has a lot of power that you're not using. First off, did you know that you could load an image into this tab, then use either of these two image recognition tools. Deep Buru can recognize the tabs of an anime image, and Clip is used to recognize the tags of a real image. Let me load this anime image I generated and hit interrogate Deep Buru. And there you go, there are my tags. I can load a real picture and click on interrogate clip to get its tags as well. The second feature is the sketch feature. Here I have loaded a very basic sketch of an apple. Wait, can you even call this an apple? This looks like a drawing of a two year old. But if I load my negative prompts here and then write red apple and hit generate, you can see how it converted that sketch to a nice art. It has its flaws, but it's better to do a few generations to get the optimal output. I can even improve it by using this marker-like tool to draw a sketch of a table below it, and then write apple on table, pink background, and there you go. Now this is nice, isn't it? InPaint is also a very powerful tool. You can paint over anything and change it into anything you want. In my previous anime art video, I painted over the top body of the art I generated and completely changed the clothing just by writing a few words. You can check that video for more information. But just remember how InPaint isn't a tool you need to forget. It can really add details you need after an art generation and is really helpful if your initial generation missed a few details. Number four, use hires.fix to correct faces. 90% of the time, stable diffusion is going to end up giving you a really bad face. And this is where hires.fix comes into play and helps you correct your messed up face. If you write a normal prompt and hit generate, you'll probably get a really bad face. Now, if you click on that hires.fix button and then choose an upscaler like R. Ezergen, then hit the generate button, you'll get some insanely good eyes. Here, it's very important to keep an eye out for the settings. If you don't want a lot of pressure put on your VGA, or if you want the generation to be done fast, increase the higher steps, but you'll have to sacrifice quality. If you want more quality, but don't mind the extra time and resources, you can keep it zero. Change width and height to what you want, or use the upscale by box right here. Hires.fix is much better than your usual restore faces option. In fact, here's an image with restore faces on, and here's the same image of that same prompt with hires.fix on. You can see the difference, right? Number three, use VAEs. If you have have good art, but the color of the art is the problem. The VAEs are the solution. Ever heard of color grading or color correction? VAEs pretty much help you do that. Where do you find VAEs? Go to the site civet.ai and in the search box type VAE and you'll get a list of VAEs available for you to download. Take a look at this VAE. You can see how it adds more color to the original image and tries to give it a more photorealistic feel. After downloading a VAE, you need to go to your Stable Diffusion web UI install directory. There, go to Models, and then click on the VAE folder and paste your VAE in here. Now, go to your Stable Diffusion interface and click on Settings. On the left side, navigate to the section called Stable Diffusion, and in there, select SD VAE. If it doesn't appear, make sure to click the blue Refresh button. You might also notice there are two options called Automatic and None. If your VAE has a similar name to the checkpoint or model you're using, then Automatic will load that VAE. Or if you select None, it will select the VAE integrated to the checkpoint. Make sure to click the Apply Settings button to save the settings. Now, each time you generate an art, that particular VAE will be applied to the generated art. Some interfaces allow you to change VAE with each generation, so keep an eye out for that too. And one downside of this is how the VAE might affect the generation, so be careful to check any comments the creator has given in the description page. Number two, use the styles box. Let's say you generated a very nice art from a certain prompt, but then then you close Stable Diffusion and someday wish to regenerate that same prompt or modify that prompt a little bit. Or you are tired of typing the same
same prompt every day and you want to keep it saved so you can just paste it every time you start Stable Diffusion. So as an example, I have a set of negative prompts that I often use. Now I'll take my cursor over to the save icon right here and then click it once. I got a new box asking me to enter the name of the style. How about I type negative prompts? And if you're using this for a specific generation, you could include that as well. Press enter and the style will be saved. Now if I go and reload the UI and go to the styles box, you'll see our saved style. I click on it, then click on the paste icon right here. And there you go. You've got your negative prompts. You can save any large or small prompt this way and make the process much easier. Number one, write prompts smarter, not harder. When comparing Stable Diffusion with Midjourney, or when anyone mentions Stable Diffusion, everyone thinks, oh, big prompts. There's a huge misconception in the AI community that in order to produce good art in Stable Diffusion, you need to write really long prompts. Well, my friend, you're still living in the Stone Age. Stable Diffusion, especially with the release of Automatic 111's web UI, has become much more advanced. To prove my point, here is a very, very long prompt to generate a woman wearing a red dress in a ballroom background. If I hit generate, you can see it generates a nice art of a woman with all the details we mentioned. Let me hit generate again, and here's another beautiful art. So that proves that this prompt works. But imagine how long it would take to write this prompt. It's more than 90 characters long. What if we can simplify this prompt? All right, let me show you step by step how I simplify this prompt. You can see in the original prompt, there are a ton of keywords about how art should be realistic and good quality. But most models come with art trained in good quality, so we only need to focus on realism. Rather than writing an essay about realism in the prompt, I'll just type realistic, then select the keyword and press the control and up arrow key. This increases the weight of the keyword and puts more focus on that keyword. Next, we don't need to mention how the art should be high quality over and over again. We can simply enter one keyword and be done. We also don't need these perfect face, beautiful face keywords because we already control any bad quality art with our negative prompts. So all we need is a description of the woman and what she should be wearing. Then we just need to specify the camera angle for the shot and at last the background in one single phrase. There we go. We reduced a 94 word prompt to 35 words. And if I hit generate and wait a few seconds, I get an artwork of the same quality as before. See, no detail changed. If I hit generate again, there you go. Even nicer art. The whole point of this experiment is to show how advanced stable diffusion has become. Sure, if you're using its original model, then you'll need these keywords. But if you're using a well-trained model downloaded from Civit AI, then there's no need to put more effort writing prompts. It's just about including what you want and balancing the weights. You can even keep the negative prompts the same. Trust me, guys, prompt generation can go a long way, and there are a lot of small tricks you can learn. I'll be doing a video about it very soon, so stay tuned and be subscribed to the channel. So that's it. Those are my five tips. Hope it helped you and you learned something. As always, if you learned something, make sure to hit the like button and stay subscribed for more awesome AI content like this. Comment down below what your favorite tip is. Thanks for watching AI gang, and I'll see you all in the next video.